This LOS is identify the appropriate test statistic and interpret the results for a hypothesis test concerning the population mean of both large and small samples when the population is normally or approximately normally distributed and the variance is one, known, or two, unknown. Okay, in this LOS we're going to look at the tests concerning a single mean. Um, so for these next few LOS, I'm, for, I'm always going to start the first slide showing the different tests as we roll through them. Because the key for success on these type of questions is uh, to read the question very carefully. You need to identify which test is being done. You need to use the right formula to get the test statistic. And then you need to compare the test statistic versus the level of significance. And then you're going to accept and reject. Okay? So this first one, we're doing a t-test. A t-test is a hypothesis test using a statistic t-statistic that follows a t-distribution. The t-distribution is a probability distribution defined by a single parameter known as degrees of freedom. Each value of degrees of freedom defines one distribution in this family of distributions. The t-distribution is closely related to the standard normal distribution. Like the st standard normal distribution, the a t distribution is symmetrical with a mean of zero. However, the t distribution is more spread out. Okay, so here um, when we calculate, because we're looking at the tests concerning a single mean, you can see we're looking at uh, uh, an average or a mean minus the population mu uh, average, and we're going to divide by the uh, standard error, which we have seen how to calculate in a uh, previous LOS. So again, uh, for tests concerning a single mean, we're going to calculate the test statistic and we're going to uh, compare that statistic versus a level of significance and then we're going to accept and reject. So the best way to see this is we're going to walk through a, uh, an example uh, step by step. Okay, so again this is a test concerning a single mean. So this is the example. Wilco is a manufacturer in a mature cyclical industry. During the most recent industry cycle, its net income averaged uh, 30 million per year. So then we see an average there. That's going to be our X bar. With a standard deviation of 10 million and N equals 6 observations. So from that, we're going to be able to do, uh, calculate our degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1, and that's going to equal 5. Okay. Management claims that Wilco's performance during the most recent cycle results from new approaches and that we can dismiss the probability expectations based on its average or normalized earnings of 24 million uh, in prior cycles. So that becomes your mu equals the 24 because it's talking about uh, another average, okay? So with mu as the population mean of uh, annual net income, formulate a null and alternative hypothesis consistent with testing Wilco's claim. So here's the test. The, um, the null hypothesis is that the average is less than or equal to 24 million. And the alternative hypothesis is that the average uh, net income is greater than 24 million. So it's a one-sided test, okay? So assuming that Wilco's net income is at least approximately normally distributed, identify the appropriate test statistic. So we're, we're, doing, it, we're doing the t-test um, concerning a single mean in this case. And given that net income is normally distributed with unknown variance, the appropriate test, test statistic is, uh, is a t-stat, as I said. And the degrees of freedom is 6 minus 1 equals 5 degrees of freedom. So identify the rejection point. So you have to find the critical value at the 5% level of um, uh, significance for the hypothesis test. So we're going to go, and the next slide I'm going to show it to you, is that we have to go to the T distribution table in the back of the book. And uh, in the row for degrees of freedom equals 5, under the 5% uh, critical value, we read the rejection point critical value of 2.015. So we'll reject the null if the T is greater than uh, 2.015. Uh, so again, remember, here we failed to reject the null. Uh, here we reject the null if we're outside of that critical value, same way that we learned in the uh, LOS for hypothesis testing, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is calculate our test statistic. 
which is not too difficult. It's the 30 minus 24, so we get six in the numerator, which is our average minus our um, mu, our population average, divided by the standard error. Remember how we calculate the standard error? It's gonna be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So n we had equals six, so it's gonna be 10 divided by the square root of six, and that gives us 4.08. Uh, so we're gonna get, uh, so when we calculate our test statistic, we have 1.46969. You can see that's less than the critical value, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the difference between the sample mean of 30 million and the hypothesis value of 24 million is uh, not statistically significant. So we'll just work on that example a little bit more with a bit more information just to help uh, consolidate your understanding. So the first thing that we need to do, as I mentioned, is we need to calculate the test statistic. So we had our, um, our uh, average, 30 million, minus our mu, which was our population average of 24. So we had six as our numerator, and then our denominator was our standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is our standard error, okay? So we calculated our test statistic of 1.46969, and we needed to compare it versus a critical value. So where did we find that critical value? Well, we need to go to the appendix uh, at the back of the chapter, and we're gonna look at the uh, table of the student, student's T distribution, one-tailed probabilities. So as we mentioned, uh, the degrees of freedom for this was five, which was the six observations minus one, and we went to the 5% probability uh, column, and we have our critical value of 2.015. As we saw, our, our calculated test statistics was less than the 2.015, so we failed to reject the null hypothesis. If it was more than the critical value, we would reject. Okay, so that's um, the first hypothesis test concerning a single mean. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.